is Veena from Pataki, the channel that's about baking and much much more. Here's where you'll find quick and tasty recipes for new cooks and those with less time to spend in the kitchen. Okay then, let's get cracking with today's recipe. Welcome back. Today I'll be showing you my go-to recipe for whenever I'm in the mood for crisp and tasty homemade cookies or biscuits. These are not only 100% Atta biscuits, they are also eggless and are made without any baking soda or baking powder. Best of all, they are crunchy and delicious. So now, let's see how to prepare Atta biscuits at home, where else but at Patta Cake. To make atta biscuits, we'll need atta or whole wheat flour, salted butter, sugar, ground cardamom and a little milk. Let's start by sifting 1 and a half cups of atta to make it light and airy. In this bowl, I have 130 grams of salted butter. You could use a fork, whisk or wooden spoon, but I prefer using a fork. The butter shouldn't be too soft or melted. We'll whisk this for a minute. Next, let's add in 120 grams of sugar. I got this from half a cup plus one tablespoon of granulated sugar that I powdered finely. If you're directly going to use 120 grams of powdered or icing sugar, that would be almost one cup in volume. That is, one tablespoon less than one cup to be exact. Let's whisk the butter and sugar together for three to four minutes till the mix is light and creamy. Now let's stir in the ground cardamom. You could use half a teaspoon of vanilla extract instead if you prefer a vanilla flavor. Then let's add in the atta in two portions. Remember, you don't have to knead the dough. Just mix everything well till you have a slightly moist, crumbly dough like this. To form a cookie dough, we'll now have to add in around two tablespoons of milk, one tablespoon at a time. The dough is already coming together, so I won't add any more milk. Now you might need to add a little more or a little less milk than 2 tablespoons, depending on how you've measured your ingredients. Let's transfer the dough to a clean working surface and press it together into a ball. I'll divide this into two parts. One part I'll mold into a square shaped log and then wrap this firmly in parchment paper and keep it in the freezer for 30 minutes. The other part, I'll mold into a cylindrical log. Like before, I'll wrap this too in parchment paper. You could also use cling film to do this. Now let me move this to my freezer too. After 30 minutes, here's the first log of dough. I'll cut this into square shaped slices around a quarter inch thick. I'll now make a simple design on each by piercing them with a skewer. But you could make any design of your choice. Now for lining your baking tray, use any scraps of leftover parchment paper that you may have or even butter wrappers like I've shown you in other cake videos before. Instead of tossing them away, you could first put them to good use, right? You could even use the same sheet of parchment paper in which you wrapped the dough earlier. There's no need to keep too much space between the biscuits as they expand only minimally. Let's bake these at 160 degrees centigrade, that's 325 Fahrenheit, for around 22 to 25 minutes. But make sure to check them after 20 minutes. This first batch took 23 minutes to bake. Like I've often mentioned, oven times vary, so you might need a couple of minutes more or less than I did. You'll know the Atta biscuits are done when they are light brown at the bottom and also start browning along the edges and on top. I'll transfer these to a wire rack to cool. In the meanwhile, let's unwrap the other dough roll. And cut it into quarter inch thick slices. This method may not give you perfect shapes. 
but it is quicker and saves the bother of repeated rolling out, cutting out shapes and re-rolling the scraps of dough. You might have to reshape some of the biscuits to get a proper round shape. Once again, I'm making a simple design on top of the biscuits. You could also bake them plain as they are. I'll now transfer these to a parchment paper lined baking tray and I'll bake these two at the same temperature as before. These have already cooled. The biscuits become crisp as they cool to room temperature. Here's my second batch of baked biscuits. These needed 22 minutes to bake properly. I'll cool these two on a wire rack and then we'll check how the biscuits have baked. Believe me, these biscuits are great to enjoy with a cup of tea. You have to taste them to find out how tasty they are. Let's check how these have baked. This one is crisp and light. And these other biscuits too seem to have baked perfectly and are equally crunchy. So there you have it. An easy recipe for tasty, crunchy atta biscuits. Worth trying out, right? Hope you'll definitely give this recipe a shot. And don't forget to leave some feedback for me, okay? Hope you enjoyed today's video. And do stop by again for yet another quick and tasty recipe. Till then, take care. Happy cooking!